What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We back with the boxing clinic and more. Um, you know, back talking some real boxing issues. Well, don't know when I'm gonna drop this video, but may drop it Friday night, Saturday morning, something like that. Um, don't forget we did the podcast for the live show. If you missed it on YouTube or you just you know don't want to keep YouTube open to pay for YouTube to watch outside of YouTube videos. Um, if I said that right, you know, follow the podcast link, subscribe to us on the podcast. I'm working on putting the podcast on Spotify, iTunes. We're getting that ready as well. So y'all can listen to us on the go without having to have YouTube up. Um, don't forget, we're doing live scoring, live reaction for the whole Robert Easter Jr., uh, Javier Fortuna, and Lamont Peterson, Earl Spence card. Um, just the two fights. Live scoring, live reaction, no footage. I don't want to get popped, but let's talk about the forgotten man. Julius Ndongo, who has relocated to Omaha, Nebraska, and signed a new uh, promotional pack with Lou DiBella. His old promoter mad about it, so I, you know, I guess they had to pay him off. And uh, when he lost to Crawford, his whole country turned on him, apparently. So, you know, I don't know if that factored in him moving to Nebraska, but people were getting by him at 140. Um, I thought he should have got an immediate shot at some of his titles he lost, but maybe he needs some time to step back. Um, I haven't looked at the rating, rankings, but he should be highly ranked in all the titles that he did have. Um, and some people say he's the best fighter at 140, even after losing to Terrence Crawford. It wasn't a devastating knockout to the head. It was a knockout to the body. He didn't have much of an amateur experience at, at all. Crawford got inside and looked like he popped him right to the chest and, and knocked him out. Um, Crawford is a special individual. Um, and I don't see any of these guys being Crawford right now or either close to close to Crawford's level. But, you know, where do, does Julius Ndago rank at 140? Other than the people in the picture, you got Terry Flanagan, Reese Hooker, who's fighting on the uh, fighting for the vacant WBO title with uh, on the same card as uh, Murray and, and Billy Joe Saunders, and um, you also got a uh, you know the bomb Ronsis Bartholomew fight with the Relic guy. They fighting for the, the vacant WBA title in the rematch, which most people thought the other guy beat Rancis. but here you got Broner, Amon, Postal, um, Regis, Taylor, and Omar Figueroa if he can make the weight. And um, also got Amir, uh, Jose Ramirez in there who can win that unofficial tournament with Postal and Regis and Amir Mine, uh, Mikey Garcia as well, Adrian Broner. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see where uh, Julius Andago can get in, where he fit in at, and what fights he can get with Lou DiBella. Um, obviously, all, all uh, fights are on the table if he's not with Lou DiBella. Um, and he has a pact with um, Al Heyman. I don't know if, that, if that's the case. But um, where would I put him right now? Um... Obviously, I, I think he'd be a stylistic matchup for a lot of different people on here. I think a bad, the two bad matchups for him, um, you know, obviously, I think it's uh, Josh Taylor and Regis Progress because uh, how rugged Regis is. He probably can box Regis, but I think Regis can close the distance and, and, and test him out real quick and see if he recovered from that knockout. I just think that would be a bad style. Um, Postal, I, I don't know. I think, uh, I don't know, man. That would be a good fight. It's a lot of good fights to be made with Dongo at 140. It's a lot of money to be made. Let's not forget about Lippiness as well. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, Lippiness wanted to, you know, fight him. And be, he was his mandatory, but they uh, got the uh, exception for, for Crawford. Uh, most people think Ndongo could be the number two, you know, number one best uh, guy at the division right now at 140. And that's possible. Um, would he be a bad stylistic for, for Mikey Garcia? Yeah, because he moves, he boxes, he's real lengthy. Uh, Mikey had to cut the ring off. He got a real nice rhythmic uh, movement to him. He's a tough guy. He's definitely top three at the weight right now. In my opinion, you know, he's talking about what he's accomplished, um, even coming off a loss. I just think, you know, Taylor will be will be difficult for him. I think Pregas will be difficult for him, stylistically match up. Um, Omar can be difficult for him. But as far as guys, I think, like, might be in his, his favor. A fight with Mikey Garcia might be in his favor because his length, his height, his boxing ability. Um, you know, Lippinets, I think he, he, can, he can get Lippinets, but that would be a tough fight. Lippinets got power. Um, Broner, um, he probably boxed the crap out of Broner. I think he'll watch Broner. The movement and the volume is too much. Um, Amir Mine, I think he can get a mine. I think he can get postal. Um, but the beauty of boxing. You know, people forgot about this guy. And like I said, I think he's top three. He possibly could be number one right now. Rancis and him will be a, a, a funny looking fight because they're both long and rhythmic and good movement. Um, you know, you know, Mo Hooker is another long tall. It's, it's a lot of different characters that people are not aware of at 140 right now that's that haven't really bubbled and popped as far as on the household names yet. And uh, this division is looking very deep. It's looking like a top five division in boxing, which I hold. Uh, I think the middleweight division, you know, uh, you know, the middleweight division, the cruiserweight division, um, the welterweight division, um, the featherweight division, 
Um, and I think this division's right up there with the re- with the rest of, of the top divisions right now, um, as far as depth. Um, now popularity, it might not be up there that far, but I think once these guys that tournament start for the WBC, and once um, you know Broner comes back and he fights for Figueroa at 140, and then Josh Taylor's fighting Humberto Soto. Um, I don't know why he's fighting him, but I, I guess he he only on his 12 or 13 fight now, so just getting you know veteran experience, he moving up the right way. He's already fought in America as well. Um, and then Mikey fighting Lippin' there. So the division is starting to pop off. And it's a deep division. You know, will it get to the point where you had Devin Alexander, Tim Bradley, um, Amir Khan, Lamont Peterson, Victor Ortiz, Lucas Matisse, Marcus Madonna, Kittel, Nick, Devin Alexander? I mean, will it get to to that depth? Why you rango? I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. Zab Judah, Danny Garcia, Kendall Hart, Nate Campbell. I mean, that was a very, very deep, <laughs> deep division. And that was one of the deepest divisions in, in 140, 140-pound uh, history. So I don't know if it ever will get to that that deep that it once was. But it, it, it definitely can be comparable. You can have the um, the name brand, and this is the the, uh, the secondary brand name as far as, you know, opponents there. But it's going to be very exciting. I think Adango is top three still right now. I think he matches up, and his style matches very well with a few fighters in this division, on this list and not on this list. But he do have some stylistic problems, I believe, that could be presented to him with a few guys on the list and not on the list. But we're going to.